Hey guys, so I talked about doing this in the uh, spring update video and just getting around to messing around with it. If I got a regular old uh, five horse Briggs flathead model 13, this will apply to any uh, small engine. I'm just using the five horsepower in particular. They can be adapted for an eight or a ten or whatever you're working on. Just going to vary how you, uh, what size of workers and stuff you'll use to put it together with. Anyway, um, I always like the carb on tank carb with the pull out choke. But you, you're limited on adjustment, and like when I say a mini bike engine or something, it's nice to be able to adjust the high and low end. And while this is not a, considered a performance carburetor or anything like that, we're going to give it a shot just to see how well they can get the engine to run. Because you can adjust the, the low side and the high side with this carburetor, so it's completely adjustable, adjustable throughout the RPM range, and plus it has a choke on it too. And this is actually a Tecumseh carburetor. Uh, it's aftermarket, but it is made for like a Tecumseh snowblower or tiller engine, something like that. But uh, now that's always been the main thing I didn't like about Tecumseh engines was the carburetors. But hopefully, being an aftermarket copy, maybe it'll be a little bit better. Who knows? It probably has a plastic float in it too, so it might help with that part of the problem. But anyway, this will be the type of muffler I usually use. And you can't just put this carburetor on the engine. These mounting, existing mounting holes are at a, what appears to be maybe a little bit more than a 45 degree angle so you can't have the carburetor at an angle like this so it's got to be out here and plus it's in the way of the muffler. So um, you really need it about like right here or out like this but you really want to get the carburetor as close as possible to the intake port. So in order to make manifolds for it I'm going to use some thick washers. And these are the same size inside as the uh, port here. Very close. You can open up just a hair if necessary. But this is the uh, intake gasket for this engine. And you can see kind of what we got to do. Now if you had a... Now I'm not going to cut this exactly the shape as this, but I am going to kind of cut this off to, just to make it a little smaller. And uh, you can see it's just perfect. <laughs> And then after we get done, it'll be surfaced a little bit. Now the, the carburetor side is actually just a little bit bigger, but the, the body, but the throat of the carburetor is smaller, so the gasket's just made that way for some reason. But still, the, the screw hole spacing's a little bit wider, so I can't decide to use this one. And just kind of notch it on the washer, or go with the big one, which is too big, which doesn't really matter. Because the pipe will fit inside it, then just drill the holes and cut off the excess. We might just go that route. I think it'd look a little bit better. But uh, on this one, the three-quarter inch pipe will fit right in it, so it'd be easy to weld to it and everything. I don't know if I'm going to use this or not, but kind of get an idea of what it would have to be. If he's in a hurry, you could cut this pipe at an angle and weld it like that. But that might cause a little bit of restriction. So we might actually do that just for the video just to show you give you an idea how to do this and i'm not the first one that's ever done this uh, a lot of people are doing this when they uh, go-kart builds and stuff adapting to like makuni carburetors and stuff to engines and uh, i'm not going to cover the air filter part i'm going to leave that up to you but you can come up with something or use a factory style uh, air intake or adapt a uh, um, cone type filter to it somehow but just for this video we're just going to try to get it going and we're just going to be running this engine on the bench. We're not going to be actually testing. I just want to get an idea of how it will run and see if I can tune in the idle and get it to get a little bit better throttle response. That's the main goal for doing this. And we're not going to redline this engine or nothing. It's a factory stock engine made in 71. So it's got some hours on it. But it don't smoke or nothing. So it's a good solid engine. We just want to get an idea of how we can tune it. So uh, let's just get started on it here. Uh, let me trace this out. And then we'll get the welding and cutting and everything once I figure out exactly how we're going to go about it. Alright, so I decided to use the big one for the carburetor side and the smaller one for the intake side. Um, I traced the uh, gasket then added a little bit to it from strength and I'm going to grind down, probably grind that line off right there just to make it a little bit uh, smaller. This is going to be cut and then grinded. So I'm going to go ahead and get set up for the to drill these holes and we'll look at it here in a second.
Something's wrong, guys. I got it just perfect. <laughs> it don't happen all the time. I mean, it's just absolutely perfect. All right, so I grind them down a little bit. You don't necessarily have to do that unless you want to, but uh, just kind of makes them a little bit smaller and uh, everything. Now they're kind of egg shaped. You know, about it. Uh, so now let me try to figure out a piece of pipe to use. Uh, I don't know what I got to work with, but let me see what I can find. Okay, so this would have been the original type of carburetor that was on it with the pull-out choke. And I love these carburetors. It's just, like I said, you don't have much adjustment on it. But I wanted to put a note on here that uh, the throat of the carburetor is considerably smaller than uh, what we're going with. So that's going to be a upgrade right there, just getting more air and fuel into it. All right, so I figured out what I'm going to use. It's a piece of uh, conduit. It's galvanized, so you want to remove the coating if you're going to use a piece of galvanized pipe. Black iron pipe is uh, recommended for any type of welding, but you know I got my angle marked here. It's not going to take a whole lot of bend in this. I figured this would be the best way to do it. Just cut it there. And just use this. This is from my uh, Pose Twin exhaust video where I put two of uh, these style mufflers on a, a Pose Twin. That might be interesting for you to check out. I'll have to get some more of these. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this cut, and we'll. Try to weld. We're going to have to weld the, the engine side first, then figure out where exactly we're going to put this at. Do one thing at a time. Alright guys, got the piece made. It's not an extreme amount of angle, but there is you know, a little bit of angle to it. And you want it curved like this instead of trying to use like a fitting or something. I got this pretty well marked here. I had to grind just a little bit for the screws. So I figure I'll have to use cap screws. Which is no big deal, but... That's about how it's going to be. And this one will weld flush at the right angle. And we'll deal with that here in a little bit. So that's about what we're looking at. What I'm going to do is, as bad as I hate to do it, I'm going to take this outside just like this and tack weld it so I know i got this centered. And I'm just barely going to tack it. That way if it's not centered I can grind it off and make sure I might take this off and look at it and see because I got them I got I got it marked there so I should be able to line it up anyway we'll look at it after I weld it I don't like you can't hardly really see much trying to weld on camera so we'll just look at it afterwards here then we'll do the outer one last also note I removed all the galvanized coating because when you weld on it or anything it'll uh, heat up and give off fumes that are toxic to you so you don't want to Make sure you get all the galvanized off and the wire brush when the grinder is perfect. Alright, so this side's done. I didn't get the vessel looking weld on there, but it is sealed. I checked it. Had to go to uh, Allen Drive cap screws to get more clearance. And I got this lined up. Looks like it's pretty close to being level this way. And the magnet's going to keep it flush so it won't interfere with the gasket or the carburetor. Now I'm just going to Weld on this side over here, and we'll be done. Alright, guys, there it is. You can see right there, got plenty of clearance in the muffler. A good quarter inch, three eighths distance between there. Carburetor sitting just about perfectly level. So you can just trim that uh, flange down quite a bit if you wanted to. Like I said, I didn't get the best looking welds, but I checked it and it's not leaking or nothing, so it's really all that matters. They probably be painted at some point, probably not in this video, but just for testing. So I'm going to go ahead and get this mounted on the test stand, get a gas tank hooked up. That's the only bad thing about the float type carburetors having to hook up a gas tank and we'll see what it's going to do. Alright guys, got gas going to it here. Got an 8 horsepower tank set up here and we are getting gas. Let's just see what happens.
truck has seems like it runs pretty good like that. And it does have the little better throttle response than it does with the factory style carburetor, so it should help with that. And it's fully adjustable, low end and high end. Uh, you can see this little tube right here. That'd be for a primer button, like most of the companies had. But uh, what I, I seen a little bit of gas trying to come out of that, so I'll hook a little line of that and come up, make it like a vent. What I'll do with that. So. Well, guys, you got any questions, comments, or anything else, feel free to leave a comment below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So, thanks for watching, guys. Catch you later.